Hey you guys, welcome back. We're on day two now and we're gonna kick it off with legs and glutes. Again, if you've got yoga blocks and a strap, keep them nearby just in case. And we're gonna start with some basic stretches. If you're anything like me, your hamstrings can get pretty tight. And so this is a good way to warm them up and prepare our legs for the sequence that's about to come. So when you're ready, meet me on your mat and let's get started. We are actually gonna start standing. So meet me in a standing position and we're gonna take a nice wide stance. So I would like to do about a four foot stance if possible and then hands to your hips, we're just gonna hinge forward and release them down. Now, if this is your first stretch of the day, just be gentle by bending your knees, letting your head hang heavy, relaxing the head and the neck by shaking it yes and no. Followed by some nice deep breathing here. And you can stay right here, this feels pretty good. If you want a little more, you can begin straightening into the legs and you can always keep a micro bend here as needed. Maybe you want some movement by wagging hips side to side. Maybe you even wanna hang ragdoll and grab opposite elbows and sway it out. This is your choice here. So swaying or staying in a still position, whatever works best for you. Sometimes it feels nice to walk your hands out and come into an elongated downward facing dog. <sighs> Wherever you are, take a few more breaths. <sighs> Good. Final breath here. We're gonna plant the palms beneath the shoulders, take a little halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. And from there, we're just gonna heel toe the feet all the way beneath the hips now. And just take a few more breaths in a standing forward fold or Uttanasana. Your hands can rest on the feet or grabbing the back of the heels or the calves. Again, micro bend into the knees as much as needed. So what I often see here is people trying to gaze forward but really let the head and the neck hang long here and totally relaxed. <sighs> Good, we'll take a final breath here by finding a little halfway lift, hands to your shins or your thighs, getting a nice flat back. And exhale to fold. Nice. From here, let's just turn to face the front of the mat and we're just gonna come onto the seat and we're gonna extend our right leg long as we bring our left heel into our right hip crease. We're gonna hinge from the hips forward, keeping your heart forward. And again, if you've got a strap, you can loop it around your foot if you need to. You can also grab onto the calf as needed, bending into the knee, and then just relax. Let the head hang heavy, let your spine round and take three deep breaths in and out as we continue to say hello to our hamstrings. Good, one more breath here. Nice job, we'll slowly come up and we're just gonna switch sides. So again, keeping it nice and gentle here. You can loop a strap around your foot if you'd like, micro bend the knee if you'd like or if you need to, and then we're just gonna hinge and round, head hanging heavy, spine is rounded here too, a gentle flex in this left foot. Nice deep breaths. Very nice, we'll slowly round up. Ah, <sighs> All right, let's get into it. We're gonna start with our first pose, which is a low lunge position. So we're just gonna cross the legs and plant the palms. We're gonna step up and back to downward dog to start. Downward dog is a nice full body stretch. So a nice way to continue warming up through the legs and especially through the hamstrings. And then when you're ready, we're just gonna step the right foot up. So you can help your foot up if it's not coming all the way. We're coming into a low lunge to start and we're gonna drop our back knee down. So take a couple deep breaths here to just let your hips melt forward and down. Good, and if you're feeling tight or if this is unaccessible for you, placing yoga blocks or books about the same size beneath your hands will help. Take another breath here, keeping the gaze forward. 
Good. From here, we're going to move into Alanasana, or high crescent lunge. So we're gonna tuck the back toes and straighten the back leg. And then as you're ready, we'll take our arms up overhead as we bend into our front knee. Now the back leg can remain straight or we can bring a micro bend into it as we tuck our pelvis forward. The micro bend will help take pressure out of the low back if you're feeling it. So from here, we'll take one breath in our high lunge position, our crescent lunge. And then we're gonna add some knee dips. So from here, we're gonna dip our back knee down and then straighten it out. So your hands can stay up overhead. Maybe you wanna flow with cactus arms and pull the elbows down as you dip your back knee down. Keep the glutes active. Good, feel that firmness in your front right quad for three. For two. And one, awesome job. We're gonna meet back where we started in high crescent lunge. And then to come out of it, we're gonna bring our hands to our hips and we're gonna step our left foot forward to meet the right. Give those knees a little shake and then we're gonna come right into side two by stepping that right foot back. From here, begin by bringing hands down to the mat or to blocks if you'd like and then planting the back knee. Let your hips melt forward and down. And in a crescent lunge, whether you're high or low here, you wanna make sure that your knee is over your front ankle and never beyond it. Let's take a couple deep breaths here, letting the hips melt forward. Relaxing into the inner groin, the hips, and the hamstring of this front leg. Take another breath. Very nice. Now from here, we'll tuck our back toes. We're gonna straighten that back leg first, get firm through those legs, and then we'll take our arms up, high crescent lunge, all in asana. So settle in here, and again, decide if that straight leg feels good in the body, or if you wanna bring a micro bend into the back knee. Scoop that pelvis forward, and here we go with our knee dips. We're gonna exhale to lower, Inhale to lift, keeping the glutes engaged here. Arms can remain overhead, or if you wanted to cactus arm flow, here we go. Strong and engaged through the lower body, working with the breath. We'll go for three, for two, and one. Woo! Come back to center, hold your high crescent lunge. Deep inhale, exhale breath. And then releasing hands to your hips, we'll step the right foot up to meet the left and shake those legs out. All right, now I'm gonna turn to face you as we move into our next pose, which is chair pose Utkatasana. This is going to be a moving flow, so we're gonna do the variation with the feet touching. So your inner ankles are touching, and then as you bend into your knees, squeeze the inner knees too as we bring hands to heart center. Now from here, you wanna lift the heart as you stick your booty out. You wanna feel a nice C curve in your lumbar spine. Sink down nice and low to start. And what we're gonna do is little baby pulses to get it going. You wanna feel the weight pressing down through your heels. Now I'll turn to face the side now so you can see. We're just pulsing about four inches up, four inches down. Keep your glutes active the whole time. Keeping the weight so much in the heels that maybe you can lift your toes like I am for three, for two, simple but not easy, and one. Good, reset, come back to center. Now from here, we're going to pulse our right knee up and down. Now before we get started, take a look down at your left knee. I'll turn to face you once more. Make sure that it's pressing towards the outer blade of your front foot so that it's not caving inward. So here we go, we're gonna lift and lower through that right knee. Whew. Keep it going. Now from here, we're gonna add on. We're gonna take it out and forward. Woo-wee! Try to keep that left leg stable. For three, here comes the payoff. For two, and on that last one, we've earned it, standing figure four. Woo! Now you can keep your hands here for a little balance. You can relax your arms onto your uh, front leg or maybe even drop your fingertips down to the mat. Wherever you are though, keep an active flex in that right foot to protect your knee joint. Take another breath here. <sighs> Good, and let's come back upright. We'll release the legs down, shake them out, and we'll just take a fold in between. Good. A little halfway lift. 
Ha! <sighs> and we'll fold. Heel toe the feet back to touch if they became separated. We're going to come all the way up and we'll sink all the way down back to Utkatasana. Side two, let's get it done. So keep that right knee pressing towards the outer blade of the right foot, left knee lifts, and here we go. We're gonna lift and lower. Now try to challenge yourself by staying low in that front right knee. Keep that right knee strong. Good. Stay with it, keep breathing. Feel those glutes active and working hard. And then we'll start the lift and out to the side. Pulsing here. You can always do this up against a wall if you want a little help with the balance aspect. Woo, let's finish strong. We know what's coming. We know we got that payoff. Let's go for three, for two, and final one. Woo, lift it up and rest. So it is my left ankle that's resting on my quad above my knee. My left foot is flexed. I can stay here, hands to that front leg or fingertips down or on blocks. Three breaths. And release, very nice. We'll come all the way up. And then from there, we're just gonna bring our hands to our lower back, fingertips facing up or down. We'll get a nice little supported back bend here. We'll rise all the way to standing. And we're gonna move into warrior two. So left foot forward, we're gonna step our right foot about four feet back as we bend into our front knee, aligning it over our front ankle. Now if you're back here, that's totally fine. What we don't wanna see is knee extending beyond the ankle. So coming into that warrior stance, bringing your arms out to a T, tucking pelvis, and sending gaze over your front fingertips. Settle into that front knee lunge and really feel the legs active and working hard. Take a nice inhale, exhale breath. You're doing awesome. And we're about to add a little movement flow through the legs. So with your inhale breath, we're gonna straighten the legs, arms come up, gaze can follow the fingertips or stay right in front of you. Exhale lower, send your gaze forward. Here we go, inhale rise. Exhale lower. Inhale rise. Exhale lower. Three more, breathe with me. Last one. And we're gonna hold here. If you want a little added challenge, we're gonna pop onto the ball of the front foot. Three final breaths, working into that calf muscle for two. And one, awesome, plant that heel. We're gonna lift the arms, straighten that front leg, bring those left toes to face forward, right toes to face the back of the mat, bam, warrior two, side two. Settle in first, get that lunge, stack the knee over the ankle, send your gaze forward. Nice deep breathing. And let's get ready to flow. Inhale, breath. We're gonna straighten the arms and the front leg. Exhale, lower. Inhale, we rise. Exhale, lunge. Good, two more. And last one. Settling into your warrior. Three final breaths here. If you did so on the first side, we're gonna lift the front heel. Keep breathing. Send that gaze powerfully over those front fingertips for three, two, and one. Awesome job, we'll straighten the legs. Coming into star pose, we're gonna hinge forward, take a breath. <sighs> awesome job. From there, we're gonna plant those palms and slowly heel to our feet in, preparing for malasana. So notice that my feet are a little bit wider than hip width distance. I'm gonna do this facing forward to start. So you're gonna bring your heels in 
and your toes slightly out. Pressing elbows against knees as you bring your palms to touch at heart center and lift your heart. This is an active pose, this is a working posture, meaning this doesn't happen overnight. So if your heels are lifted, you can come up higher and or roll your yoga mat or a towel beneath your heels for that added support. Okay, so I'm gonna turn to face the front of the mat. And so that's what you want. You want your feet to be still on the mat. That's about how wide of a stance we want. Now, if malasana is enough for you today, you can stay right here. You can even modify it by placing a block directly beneath your seat so that you're seated on that block on whichever height you need. Now, if malasana is part of your practice, this is feeling relatively accessible for you and you would like to add on to the challenge, we're gonna do a little walk back to the back of the mat and it's gonna look like this. We're gonna bring our prayer forward and we're gonna take little malasana steps to the back of the mat. My glutes are staying very active and strong here and they're responsible for the lift. When you get to the back, pause. Give yourself a round of applause because that's not easy. And then we're gonna take it forward. So, again, you're welcome to stay here. You're welcome to sit on that block. Or if you're walking with me, let's do it. Here we go. Forward, forward, yes. All the way to the top. <sighs> Two final breaths here. <sighs> and then this time to come out of it, we're going to plant our palms first. We're going to spin our heels out, and we're going to come into a wide forward fold. <sighs> Awesome job, you guys. You can stay hanging here for a breath. I'm gonna grab my yoga blocks for our next little exercise. Now for this, we are going to do Jiva squats. And I like to keep blocks nearby so I can show you how to use them if you'd like to modify. So Jiva squats are progressive and we're gonna start with the basics. So how we begin is we're going to extend the right foot coming into a one-legged halfway lift. Now, if your palms are not flat on the ground, this is when we grab our blocks and bring the ground up to meet us on any height that you need. So, for the first option of Jiva squats, we're gonna bend our front knee, back knee comes to meet it, inhale, lift and extend. Exhale for that crunch, and I say crunch because it's core as much as glute here. Exhale, crunch. Now you can stay right here. Like I said, option one is awesome. Option two, you want a little more, you're gonna lift your bottom heel, tap the toes on that bottom foot. Inhale, lift, extend. Exhale, lift and tap. Work with that breath. Keep the glutes strong. Good, for three. Inhale, extend. Exhale for two. Last one we're gonna hold for three, two, and one, here comes the fun part. We're gonna take it all the way through a pistol squat. So you can stay right here, or if you wanna do a few of those with me in a flow, here we go. We're gonna lift and kick, exhale, squat. Otherwise, remember, you can hold it right here. We're gonna do one more, and hold. We're all gonna stay here. So if you want help balancing, hands stay on blocks. If you want an added challenge, maybe one or both hands, can come to the foot for three, two, and one. Standing splits is our release. Woohoo! Awesome, awesome. That is not easy, but it is very rewarding. And now we're just gonna enjoy our little standing split stretch for a breath. Again, hands can stay on the blocks if you'd like. You can even bring them down to a lower level if you'd like. <sighs> and then when you're ready, our release is to a IT band forward fold. So you're just gonna cross the right foot behind the left heel. This can be very intense. So hands to blocks if you'd like, and or you can bring a minor bend into your knees to take a little pressure off. Let your head hang heavy and just breathe. Nice. Good, we're gonna come out of it same way we came in and we're gonna reset. So, if you have your blocks, bring them back to where we started. If you're not using blocks, then you're already ready to go. Now for side two, feet are planted, left leg extends, and here we go. Starting with the squats, we can bend the front knee, back knee comes to meet it, and I'll do a few of each, just like I did on the first side. Remember, either option is available to you. If you wanted to add on, then we're gonna lift the bottom heel and tap the bottom of that front right foot. Work with the breath, inhale, extend, exhale for that crunch. 
Woo-wee. Keep the core and the glutes active and engaged here. And let's go for three. Keep with it for two. And for one, good. Our next one is coming all the way through to a pistol squat. Now remember, you can stay right here, hands to blocks if you want that support. If you wanna flow, inhale, lift, exhale forward. We're gonna go for one more here and hold. Hands to blocks, the mat, or maybe one or both hands to that foot. For three, two, and one. Releasing to your version of standing splits with or without the blocks. Forehead, trying to kiss the shin here. Hmm. Take one more deep breath in and out. And then slowly release to your IT band forward fold, crossing left foot behind the right. Hands to blocks or resting to the mat. Micro bend into the knees as much as you need to. And feel the crown of your head pulling towards the mat. All right, you guys. From here, we are going to come out of that and just find a normal forward fold for a breath. I am going to move my blocks back out of the way. We've got just a few final exercises left. So when you're ready, meet me in a standing position. We're gonna find goddess pose. So you wanna bring your feet about four feet apart again, heels in, toes out, and settle into this stretch. So, to begin, we're guiding hands to heart center. We're just gonna lift alternate heels, working back into our calves. If this is ever too much, you can come up a little higher, but really try to take it to your edge, wherever that is today. One more time each side. And then coming back to center, challenge. Let's see if we can lift both. I find it helps me to take the mudra here, bringing your pointer finger and thumbs to touch for three, two, and one. Slowly release. We're gonna straighten into those legs and wag those hips. Final exercise here before our pigeon pose cool down, we're gonna squat and take it into a side squat lunge. So for our squats, we want our feet just a little bit narrower than goddess. So from here, we're just gonna take them forward, toes facing forward as we bend deep into our knees. So from the side, you wanna stick your booty out and get down nice and low. So from here, we're gonna squat, come up, cross, squat. Squat back to center and take it to the opposite side. Working into that side booty here as well. Stay with it, it's our final one. Wee, take it down low. Let's go for two more sets. Final time. And we're gonna hold this last squat in the center for three, two, and one. Pop up like, yeah, we just did that. Awesome job, pigeon pose, and then we're done. So, find your downward dog. Oh yeah, here it comes, right leg lifts. And we'll swing that right foot up by the hands, extending your left leg long. Take a nice deep breath. You can lower down to your forearms or even all the way down to rest on a block or your head on the mat. We're just gonna let the head hang heavy and take a few deep breaths, sending it into that right hip. We did a lot of work on the legs and the glutes today, so it's really nice to counterbalance that with a nice hip opener like pigeon. You are always welcome to pause the video and stay here as long as you'd like. But when you're ready, we're just gonna switch sides. So we're gonna press back onto the palms, tuck the toes, lift the hips, shake that right leg out. And then we'll plant the right foot, left leg lifts, and we'll take it for side two. Same thing, this is a really good pose to balance out opposites. So whatever you did on the first side, pressing into palms and staying right here, coming down to forearms, or any final expression that you'd like. Pigeon pose is all about softening the body, so really try to send your breath to any areas of tightness. We did a lot of work in those hips. And then from there, when you're ready, we'll press back onto the palms. We'll tuck those right toes, shake your left leg off. 
and then we'll just meet where we started, coming onto the seat. Again, you're always welcome to end these classes with a brief Shavasana if you'd like and if you have time. And either way, awesome job on leg and glutes. I'll see you tomorrow for day three.